Kabuli Pulao. This dish has been requested several times, so I finally made it today. This Afghan dish is famous for a reason. It's different than Pakistani Pulao, but I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Let's make it together step by step. To start, I'm setting my Instant Pot on saute mode on high, and then I'm slicing three onions very thinly. And then I put some vegetable oil in the Instant Pot, and then I'm going to saute these onions until they're very, very golden, almost caramelized. So this will take about 15 to 20 minutes, and you just need to keep stirring them, stirring them, so that they don't burn on the bottom of the Instant Pot. But they need to get very brown. That's what's going to give the flavor and the color to the dish. So they should look like this when you're done. Once we're satisfied with the color of the onions, we can add our meat. And I'm making about 5 pounds of beef here. So in order to get all sides of the meat nice and brown, I'm going to do it in batches. So I'm adding one half of the meat, frying it, then taking it out, setting it aside, adding the second half of the beef, frying it, adding a little bit more oil if it needs it, if the bottom of the pot has gotten a little bit too dry, and then doing the exact same thing, frying it on all sides, getting it nice and brown, and then taking it out. And then at the end, add all the beef back to the Instant Pot. And then we're going to add water all the way up to the pressure cooker max line. You can see that two-third line there, and then it says PC max. Your Instant Pot should have that line on the inside of the pot. So Afghan food and Pashtun food is milder as compared to food in the rest of Pakistan. So all we're adding here is salt and a little bit of garam masala. You can adjust both of these to your taste. I use two tablespoons of salt and two teaspoons of garam masala. So make sure your Instant Pot lid is in the ceiling position, and then we're going to pressure cook this for 30 minutes. Pressure cooking will ensure that our meat gets tender and take the guesswork out of that. So while the meat pressure cooks, we can wash our rice. This is Sela Basmati rice. It's good quality, long grain rice, and it's less likely to stick than regular Basmati rice. So you want to wash this extremely well about three or four times and drain all the water out of it. You can also choose to soak the rice if you wish. I don't think that's necessary if you wash it very, very well, but it's completely up to you. Then we're going to soak our raisins in some hot water for at least 10 minutes. Then we're going to fry our carrots in some vegetable oil. These are the pre-purchased matchstick carrots from the grocery store. You can buy them cut like that in the julienne cut. And then you just take them out after five minutes. And then we're going to fry our raisins for less than a minute in the same pan just to get them to glisten and look a little bit more presentable. After 30 minutes, we safely release the pressure on our Instant Pot by using a hot pad and not touching the valve directly. And then you can see that it's done. And then we're going to drain the meat and the broth. So I set up this in my sink. I put a colander over a big container and I just separate the meat from the broth. And then I'm going to measure out my broth. I'm making six cups of rice, so I need 11 cups of broth. So I'm just measuring that out and separating it. Now, Kabuli Palau has a slight sweetness to it, so we're going to caramelize two teaspoons of sugar. You just put it in a pan and slowly heat it until it becomes this consistency. Stir it around a little bit, and then we're going to take a little bit of our broth and mix it in to the caramelized sugar so that it's well incorporated, and then we're going to set it aside. So now in a large pot on the stove, we're going to add just a little bit of vegetable oil, and then we're going to add our drained rice and saute it for a couple of minutes. Now this step is completely optional, but I'm going to add a can of chickpeas that are drained and rinsed. If you don't like them, leave them out. Most people don't add chickpeas. Now we can add our broth, and this is a good time for you to actually taste your broth and figure out whether you need more salt or not. I'm adding a little bit more. This is an additional teaspoon here. Now you can add salt to your taste though, or if you think it's already salty enough, don't add any more. Then we're going to get this to a boil on high heat, and we're going to simmer it until all of the water is gone from the top of the rice. When it looks like this, we can pour our sugar mixture on top of the rice. Then we can add all of our meat on top and then our carrots and our raisins. This is so that these toppings flavor the rice while it's cooking, but you don't want to mix them in because you want to be able to easily remove them for presentation after it's done cooking. Now cover and put a towel over the top of the lid and we're going to cook this on the very lowest flame for 15 minutes exactly and then we're going to let it rest for 10 minutes before we lift the lid after it's done cooking. Okay, after the time is up, we can remove the lid and this should be perfectly cooked now. 
I'm going to remove my carrots and raisins and put them off to the side for presenting on the platter. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. And then I'm going to mix my meat in to the rice and kind of fold it in. You don't want to crush the rice, so just do this gently. And kabuli palau is a very impressive dish, so we want to plate it up very nicely, especially if we're having guests come over or just for your own family if you want to do something special. So I'm going to take out a nice serving platter and I'm going to put all of the rice and meat onto it. And then I'm going to take those carrots and raisins that I reserved on the side and I'm going to sprinkle it all on top of the dish and it's going to make it look really nice and presentable. So after we're done doing that, it's ready to serve. This goes really good with just some plain yogurt on the side. It's so delicious like that. And like I said, this is a dish that's sure to impress. Now let me know what I should cook next. And that is how you make...